Good morning for people who are here already. It's 10.40. I'm going to wait a few minutes before starting. Just making sure you can hear me. Can you hear me correctly? Thank you. Okay, it's ten forty one. Let's wait one more minute. And then we can start.
1043, I will start. Start in 14 seconds to be very precise. <laughs> <Ten>. <laughs> Okay, so good morning. Good morning, everybody. Uh, today we are going to talk about the API driven evolution, where we are today, what, what's coming, what are the best practices. Uh, so the top the agenda today will be uh, why API, what where is the need for information, what are the challenges regarding gathering this information, some accelerator we can find when we design API, and that's some of, some of the benefits of API where we are today to in order to do that. We'll discuss uh, briefly about integration end-to-end -end going beyond just the API interface. Have a quick discussion on uh, inter artificial intelligence where it can be used and see some of the innovation we are discussing uh, right now. So <clears throat> I'm Arde Depré. I'm uh, 25 years in uh, 25 years in IBM. I'm interested in security, data power, API Connect, GraphQL, and more importantly, and that's what I say to my kids, I like boxes with a uh, wire between boxes. That's what makes me uh, live. So uh, what we have seen so far is that we have seen quite a lot of adoption uh, by, uh, by many customers uh, using API. And uh, an interesting aspect of all those uh, customers is that they have been driven by cost and time to market. And, and that's very interesting to see that uh, Okay, they wanted a multi-cloud approach. They wanted to maybe create marketplace. Uh, they wanted to integrate existing system with uh, uh, data uh, which were not easily available before, and uh, also uh, delivering innovative service. But one of the main driver we we find on all these uh, customer our cost. So being able to go faster, develop faster, share the, share the data. So we can talk about those customers for a long time. I'm just having a small slide here uh, where we have much more uh, information on those customers. And I wanted to just quote uh, uh, some of our customers. So a modern approach to hybrid uh, cloud integration help start vision into action, okay? And also the second phrase, I like the third of the cost. So it's funny because uh, we were discussing with a customer and that's exactly the same number they gave yesterday, third of the cost, much faster, three times cheaper than before to expose the existing data. Uh, also, uh, what we see, uh, for example, with uh, R uh, RBL is security very important uh, at the heart of exposing and unleashing this data. And also, uh, in this case, um, using uh, mobile and uh, the uh, reaching customer through a new channel and, and in this case, a mobile application. Another uh, really uh, interesting phrase here for this uh, Istanbul uh, airport, it's a, a new, uh, very, uh, one of the largest airport in the world uh, and uh, one of the newest uh, uh, open in 2019. And uh, quoting that we believe integration is the most important part of the airport because they have a business and user customer centric view and that was possible through integrating many different systems 
weather, uh, flight information, customer information. So that's uh, uh, that very uh, very interesting. So <clears throat> one of the challenge today is uh, not really to know uh, what data we need, but where the data is. And here we see a, a lot of uh, various sources of data. They are very different uh, by nature. They can be exposed uh, in very uh, large number of, uh, of, of ways, protocols, data format, uh, and they are, uh, can uh, provide different level of, um, of services uh, uh, to, the, to the customer. So like awareness, like advocacy. So we, we have many sources. They can be uh, provide, uh, provided by devices. Uh, we can have traditional call center. So we see the, the, the data is everywhere in uh, many forms. And what's happened is uh, uh, all this system have to uh, be integrated in some in some parts and here the lead which probably is uh, uh, we don't need real time real time data will get and be fed by uh, uh, many uh, uh, many uh, services and many uh, systems uh, at the same time here another sample the call center will need um, synchronously real-time data and we'll get all this data from a various system again and that's where we need uh, uh, to be able to integrate the system very uh, very quickly so today we still have uh, a lot of proprietary formats uh, data is in different uh, structures okay they are located in various places in various data centers we have multi-cloud architecture uh, and uh, one also uh, another interesting thing that, uh, uh, for example, GraphQL can help is uh, the consumer drives uh, for requirements very quickly, sometimes very quickly, and that's something uh, that uh, the IT system needs to to be able to uh, to answer. So that's where versioning, that's where uh, uh, having customer feedback is important. I think one of the uh, important aspects of this uh, slide is the data governance. As we can see, is that many sources, uh, still it's important to understand where the data is, wh what data do we need, and how we can get it. So today, uh, still, uh, with proprietary format, uh, needs a lot of uh, skills for adapting the, 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 the format of the data. Um, <clears throat> sometimes it's very hard to get and understand how the data is structured, how we can get it, what security uh, is applied on it, where is, where is data. So it's also the security of data, the data governance aspect but also how we move the data and regulation uh, around moving this data, how secure it is, how secure it is at rest, how we can we uh, uh, reuse this data. And also, of course, to, because of all these challenges, uh, getting, uh, being able to adapt to consumers uh, may be very hard and, and takes time. So, we all believe, and one of the reasons we are in this conference is that we believe that API can accelerate, accelerate the delivery of these new models. So we find the four pillars, which are the creation of API, which must be fast, uh, being able to integrate all those sources uh, in a, a most automated approach. Of course, security is a, is a big part of it, and we have to make sure the data goes to the right person with appropriate uh, controls, uh, authentication, authorization, uh, encryption of the data uh, on the fly. Also, managing the life cycle, of course, all these data, when they are available, making sure we uh, provide them to the right uh, people at the right pace uh, and in conjunction with, with what the backend uh, provide. And 
not, uh, not the least, uh, the socialization aspect, which are how we expose and publicize this data so people know how to use it. Um, it can be done in a technical fashion, but also in a business uh, fashion, business driven. So what the business uh, needs in terms of data, uh, which can be different from what uh, the technical uh, will, will look at. So we find that in the API lifecycle, so the, the, uh, again, uh, easily creation of API, integration of microservices, integration of uh, what we may call like legacy application, enterprise application, and also uh, application that reside in uh, cloud or in any cloud as a SaaS uh, services. So, this is important. We see more and more companies uh, directly using SaaS application uh, from systems they may have uh, used to have in their uh, on-premise uh, system. Security, so ability to uh, control the data, uh, of course, with access control, uh, with um, quota limitations. So we want to make sure that uh, people do not steal uh, data and uh, control uh, from uh, 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 obfuscation and uh, encryption of the data, basically. So manage, so as we said, huh, govern the data, ensure the usage of the API, and making sure we get uh, the business uh, uh, imperative that were uh, expected, expected. So we need to make sure it's easy to analyze the data. It's not just for uh, debug purpose, but understanding the use at the business level of the API. And that's, that's important. And then empower uh, users and apps to create um, uh, ecosystems where uh, people can use and get access to the da this data very quickly and create a partner's uh, uh, ecosystem. So, again, very important when uh, a company will start the API journey, uh, understand the role of each people in the teams and all are required, of course. So, as we said, uh, we want to be able to create those API. Huh? This is the role of the developer, which uh, with a very fast uh, and a very fast uh, way of doing of building this application, most automated. And we will see uh, that uh, AI uh, can help here. Uh, the product manager who is in, ch in charge of uh, understanding which data with uh, a more business view and, uh, and deciding to who uh, shares the data. It can work, for example, with uh, a data uh, architects, uh, for example. The consumer experience, so the, uh, enabling the discovery of the API, uh, understanding maybe with a board of director where are the new uh, area where the API should be used. Uh, for example, we can uh, uh, consume uh, a company may decide to work first on customer view and then provide view on the stocks, uh, etc. So this is very important to see what the consumer understand and have this uh, this view from uh, uh, directly uh, taken from the the, the, co the consumer uh, objective. Of course, DevOps. So <clears throat> this is more related to the way uh, microservices and API are uh, delivered today. So. As we, as we have faced for the last three or four years uh, with the uh, uh, advent of uh, microservices, uh, the new way of developing uh, application and more uh, operate application, especially in the, with containers, making sure all the, the uh, publication and development of the APIs are synchronized with uh, the API exposure, for example, okay, makes this Automatics, um, the automated at most, uh, having uh, 
very nice life cycle for um, building and deploying and testing and monitoring the API. And then the architecture uh, will uh, making sure that uh, we all the protocols, all the format transformation, that the secure and security requirements uh, are in line with what is expected. So <clears throat> that's something. This slide is a, a more about a, a, a small change in the way we uh, adopt API in the full end-to-end -end, uh, integration scope. And what we show here is a, a, a no-code approach. So as we said, we want to have um, a fast way to develop API. Uh, we want to integrate systems which already have API, and we want to expose those integration flows with API um, interface <laughs> so as we see here this is just a screen capture of uh, what we call app connect enterprise and with a visual uh, interface we can integrate a lot of system and very quickly and very fast okay so the 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 idea is data driven with specific system uh, interface and gain them uh, as soon as, as much uh, as soon as possible and what we call smart smart connector so is the use of development going towards the business uh, person rather than the technical uh, uh, developer so again as we seen at the beginning this time to market and cost of development is at the heart of uh, api development so this is just a follow-up of the previous slide so all those services will have um, uh, an API interface can be integrated very quickly uh, with uh, this uh, new approach. So you see, it's not just the API interface, it's also the, uh, about integration of mail systems, uh, of course, database system, AI, because uh, as we've seen at the beginning, we have all those information, all those systems which exist, and we want to uh, make most of each system, adding uh, AI experience, uh, reusing uh, an ERP solution. So this is all those uh, connectors that will allow to, um, to be integrated in a very fast way and then exposed uh, as API. So this is uh, what we could call the end-to-end -end approach with, with API. So here, what we see is uh, uh, where uh, artificial intelligence can help, and that's where we integrate a system and we have suggested mapping. So from the interface which is exposed, uh, from the system we want to integrate uh, directly uh, providing mappings to the field that needs to be uh, integrated. And all this is based on uh, artificial intelligence. The system will learn also when you, the more and more you, you uh, develop and, and, and use it. So this is a very efficient way to, uh, to do all those mapping. And so another, another important aspect to uh, speed up the development is to use existing model. So either we have the API, we have the swagger, or we can uh, and, and start from fresh, or we can use directly a swagger from another um, system, uh, from a backend system, for example, and just integrate from it. So this is really uh, the both ways of uh, developing this interface and in a, in a very efficient manner. Here we see a new feature that we have added in the, um, in the API, IBM API Connect. And this is uh, to emphasize uh, the need of being able to debug at, uh, in every situation. And what I mean is that we have to be able to understand exactly what's happened 
in the gateways in order to uh, to to debug or or see what's going on uh, during the the invocation and why it's important it's because we may not have access to the uh, gateway and so having a clear view with a step by step uh, uh, philosophy and approach allows us to see exactly if we have a bug, what's happening during the flow, especially when it's a complex uh, flow. So we can optimize and uh, we can uh, have all this information, all the logs that are available, even if it's a, a remote system or in the cloud or anywhere. Uh, another topic uh, that is very uh, dear to me is uh, the testing of a PI. And again, there is uh, a lot of need in order to make sure all the API are working as expected. And this is something uh, that we want to happen not only at development, at integration and build phases, but also uh, in production. And we want uh, and we need to have very um, simple ways of building those testing. And uh, that's uh, very uh, important to have an effective ways of building these tests. And again, we want a no code approach. And um, we have uh, this product called uh, API uh, Connect Test and Monitor to do that, which is able to introspect uh, the API and uh, what we can do now and what we want to uh, to do is make sure the the DevOps team will incorporate those testing which have been developed with no code into the tool chains and uh, and that what we see is a very efficient way of creating the test and the end enforcing those tests during the full life cycle even beyond uh, publication so that's that's the idea and in, uh, to be very uh, precise here <coughs> we have those tests uh, available and we have webhooks that can be used to generate report uh, and that can be then used in the tool shape to take decision even to go to publication to publish it or not go to a, another environment or even going to production so this this uh, area is um is uh, very important uh, and uh, uh, provides a lot of benefits benefits uh, this is something that is is uh, uh, coming in all the industry so what what we have seen uh, uh, to, uh, so far we have seen what we want to do today is no code adding most uh, of the tool with no code uh, with uh, some connectors ai uh, benefits a uh, model driven so that's what where we are today and that's that's happening we also may want to make sure to not balance security and that's uh, with uh, global policies uh being able to deploy anywhere with uh, of course scalable uh, architecture we want to manage rest soap we still have a, a lot of soap uh, api uh, graphql we want to uh, we, we need versioning uh, and manage how uh, the consumer uh, subscribe to the api and and finally uh, as we said socialization so socialization importance of the uh, branding aspect so being able to exactly show to specific uh, communities uh, our, our apis and the image we want to provide uh, regarding uh, the, those portal in order to accelerate uh, consumption being able to propose self-service with uh, self-service onboarding, uh, maybe at least with testing purpose, and maybe uh, later, later with uh, real production uh, APIs. So what are the um, main subjects we are working and we start to see uh, more and more interest? So we, we had a presentation yesterday on this topic. GraphQL, so GraphQL, 
uh, this is a technology right now which is uh, growing uh, very significantly. Uh, one challenge with GraphQL was uh, how to secure it because uh, as written here, the client is in control and we need to make sure uh, the client uh, doesn't take more than what we want him to take. Uh, there are a lot of advantages for usability and performance huh, because uh, the way uh, GraphQL uh, works and just returning what is uh, uh, what is required. So that's something uh, we are uh, working a lot and that uh, will uh, come uh, mainstream. I can think about GitHub, Facebook uh, already using it and many, uh, many, many customers. A small word on another topic where uh, a lot of uh, a lot of things are happening is uh, asynchronous API and even driven architecture. So things are moving a little bit uh, slower than uh, we could imagine uh, three or four years ago, but things are moving, and uh, the specification. Uh, uh, Oh, for async API are moving. There is a version 2.0, which is being worked right now. But uh, uh, on IBM aspect, definitely the, in June, we have added a support in the gateway for new protocol. And um, we, we, have, we support now natively uh, AMQP and uh, Kafka. So this is not the full picture, of course, but um, this is a, a step forward, uh, this, those async uh, API, and also maybe also the use of a uh, WebSocket. Regarding event-driven architecture, uh, we have announced a few days ago uh, a, a new partnership with Confluent. So as a, a side offering with uh, API management, uh, the use now of uh, Confluent for, uh, for messaging uh, solution. So this is uh, quite new. We also have event stream based on uh, Kafka, which include other additional features uh, added. I also wanted to insist on a multi-cloud uh, architecture and wanted to show you some of the topologies uh, we have done with uh, a few customers. And uh, as you may uh, recognize, usually uh, an API management solution just have, uh, at, have those four components, like the gateway, the analytics part, the portal, and the manager. I'm not going to go in detail uh, for the, each component, but that's basically all uh, a decent API solution uh, will have. But what, what is interesting is to see that we have uh, many different uh, requirements uh, in terms of how uh, the customer want to expose the API. And I'm just going to show you three samples uh, that give you a, a feeling of what, what can be achieved and, uh, and the benefits of each uh, approach. So here is really uh, what we see. We see um, uh, two things. First, we see uh, a, a uh, cloud workload and with APIs. Okay, so we have an API management solution, and this API, uh, this uh, solution, this uh, systems with an application layer um, to interface the backend is made for first moving to cloud, definitely. But and, and provide access to uh, other consumers which are anywhere, and maybe they will call application in the cloud, or maybe they will call another application in the cloud that we presented here. So we have pure cloud workload. But of course, it is also possible that those applications will get other information from the on-premise uh, um, API. So, and those API exposed on this catalog are accessible from this application. And again, we have something similar uh, within the company, within the on-premise uh, infrastructure, 
with exposed external API that will either be served by this application layer or again access for example mainframe API so we, we have seen this uh, quite a lot and that's a very uh, typical uh, scenario and topologies where we uh, we have uh, many layers of API which are different purpose okay and different set of consumers not to talk too much we have another production environment here just to to test another uh, topology again uh, very interesting and uh, I, I think it's good to see that the requirement may vary a lot from customer to customer and why this the solution must cope with that is where we have kind of a central site uh, that, and that can be a, a worldwide uh, um, deployment huh? and then we have many many sites where uh, the need there is a need for api management and control and and in this topology uh, we have to be able to cope uh, with a very large number of gateways and a central uh, managed uh, uh, system the last one again it's another uh, different uh, topologies and different requirements it's about um, organization so we have a lot we have many customers which are in fact made of many companies or they want to expose uh, services for different companies or because they are a service provider and uh, what we see here is the ability to uh, split and govern all the api with a strict segregation and that's what this uh, topology is about uh, so we have many uh, identity provider that represent the segregation of each organization and again that's uh mix both a central governance uh, that we find here with a, a central uh, catalog of apis and also a very separated governance at the organization level so so that's it uh, that's it for the topology uh in a in a conclusion for those four slides is really to say that we are uh, we have different needs for different companies and it's important to uh, answer this multi-cloud multi-data center multi-organization uh, requirements almost uh, finished and that will be time for question the importance also of uh, of containerization so that's uh, again another facet of those uh, deployment uh, anywhere and everywhere uh, so the use of uh, container uh, kubernetes technologies and in more particularly uh, openshift with uh, what we call a, a cloud pack approach so of course due to kubernetes and openshift we can run uh, those um, products anywhere and everywhere and what we see here is that we have to go through a, a full uh, containerization of our software and the benefit here is that we offer on those packs uh, common services uh, for logging monitoring identity access management that all products will uh, benefit on a common platform so going towards uh, containerization is uh, where we're going here are some more links on uh, if you want to go deeper on those topics uh, for security uh, automation so we have paper on automation what uh, agile uh, development and API, uh, can be uh, used with ci cd uh, pipeline definition and more high level paper for uh, center of excellence another uh, conclusion slide so just to say that uh, we have uh, been honored with uh, Forrester and Gartner still uh, this year uh, for being leaders in, uh, in this, uh, in this uh, topic. <laughs> Here we go. So it's uh, 15. I think uh, we have time for questions. 
So I'm going to go in the uh, mode to see uh, if we have any question. So, uh, sorry for the screen. Huh? So let me take the question right now. So automate, so uh, role for Node, uh, Node Red, Node Red is a technology for, it, it, it's another way of uh, integrating uh, systems with uh, a graphical uh, development view. Now, um, the uh, I think the way we, we use a connector, I would say the, the connector approach is what we will do now more than just not red. Not red was very technical. Uh, what we try to do now is to uh, have all those connectors and smart connectors with, which under, which understand the the system to be integrated. So that's that's what we see here. Uh, so Node Red, more technical, can be used, of course, but that that's uh, that's um, would be replaced by those uh, by this approach. For automated testing, so we uh, there are many ways of doing that. Of course, one very popular is uh, Postman. So that's a, that's a way to do to do that. And uh, Postman with Newman, you can do some uh, kind of uh, automation. Uh, the tool I was referring, and I'm gonna just do a quick demo here, is uh, the test and monitor. This is what we propose today, and this one can be integrated with um, with CI/CD. Okay, so. Uh, let me uh, go there. So this is a, a tool which allow to create with no code uh, testing. And as, as you will see, uh, we can go very, uh, very far in, uh, in the automation. So here, let me show you, um, I'm able to generate tests uh, from a swagger or from uh, from nothing or from a postman collection and and what we see here is that introspecting the swagger uh, it creates all the um, all the invocation with all the assertion which will be validated it's a no code approach okay and you have data sets that you can add and at the end of the day I can. I think the, it won't work because the endpoint is wrong. Uh, but you will get an answer. Uh, you will get a, a view of which test has been uh, done, uh, what is the result, and what why the, the, the information. But more importantly is uh, the fact that you can have dashboard on uh, the quality of your. Um, of your API even at runtime. Okay, so here I can go a few months before and see uh, if uh, uh, what were the time, the response time, the functional, the performance, and see how it goes in my production environment. And lastly, to finish on this, <laughs> uh, integrate with uh, your DevOps, with Jenkins, for example, with webhooks and invoke those tests, which were done in no code approach, and get the result of those uh, of those tests. Uh, sampling deployment. Um, ah, okay. Let me go back to this uh, topology. So this topology, uh, we have. Uh, I guess that's the one. Huh? Uh, can you please confirm? Uh, this one is a. Uh, is very nice and it, it can write of course it's one way of doing uh, a topology huh? definitely uh, it's interesting here because we don't forbid uh, a layer to access api of course uh, from on-premise and uh, cloud provider but uh, you can discuss the need for application layer and and some companies will do that or will allow direct access to this uh, internal gateway. That's a design choice. 
uh, I think it's a very valid uh, question, uh, but uh, that's, that's a way to do it. And we had uh, several customers doing uh, exactly this, uh, this, uh, this uh, topology. Is it, uh, is it, does it answer? Is it, do you have a specific question with this topology? That, uh, and, and you see, we integrate a legacy application, new application, we have consumer everywhere. And that, that's very good. Do you have, uh, Hervé, do you have any uh, specific question on this uh, deployment? Okay, good. Thank you. All right. So I hope you enjoy this presentation. Uh, in conclusion, uh, what we can say is that um, API uh, API adoption is uh, is there. It's still evolving. We are all the company are not at the same stage, uh, definitely. Uh, but we are we are sure that the num the, the, the benefits cost from a cost perspective from a business aspect is uh, very uh, very good. We also see that uh, API uh, is also about unleashing data in a govern uh, a govern matter. And we see also uh, one aspect uh, uh, about containerization, which will change again the market, and we start to see a lot of uh, of uh, initiatives there, even if it's not very easy. I'm done with this presentation. If no more questions, uh, we will uh, stop it now. Thank you very much and enjoy the rest of the conference. Bye-bye.